Turning to the Gospel of God, Mark, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As, amen. God, we thank you for this word. May it enlighten us. May we be inspired. Help us to be your faithful disciples as we open your, our hearts to your will and your ways. Let your spirit be upon us to guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, here we are on the first Sunday in Lent, and just to remind you, Lent is the church season, which is 40 days, <clears throat> not including Sundays, though, before Easter. 40 days were chosen for Lent because, as our gospel lesson relates, after Jesus was baptized, he spent 40 days out in the wilderness preparing, preparing himself for his earthly ministry. Other parts of the gospel record that Jesus was fasting and praying during those 40 days. The season of Lent is meant to be our 40 days in the wilderness to prepare us for Easter and the work of spreading the gospel. For us, Lent is meant to be a time for restoring our faith and renewing our devotion to God. Or it is simply a time for strengthening and deepening our devotion, whether we have lost our way or we have never strayed from God's path. Of course, strengthening and deepening our devotion to God should be a constant goal for us to strive for no matter what time of year it is. But Lent is set in the church calendar each year for us to make sure that we remember the importance of restoring our faith and renewing our devotion to God. Ideally, though, Christians should always be striving to grow in their faith day by day. Now, even with the constant reminders we experience in church every Sunday and the times we have fellowship in between, we tend to fall away from God's design and desire for our path. For most of us, it happens little by little over a long period of time so that we don't notice it day to day in our lives. But if we look back over the, over the past year, as Lent asks us to do, most of, what, uh, most of us will see that we have strayed from what Jesus taught us to do, and it is time for us to get back on track. And many people seek to get back on track by increasing the amount or focusing more intently on their spiritual practices, such as scripture reading, praying, meditating, labyrinth walking, and many other spiritual disciplines. In the gospel lesson, Jesus begins his ministry by declaring, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the declaration for every season of Lent. Of course, this could be Jesus' declaration to us every day. Jesus is saying to us, now's the right time to seek the kingdom of God. There's no need to wait or to put it off. Because the kingdom of God is near you right now. All you have to do is reach out and take it in your grasp. All you have to do is breathe it in and it will fill you. Open your hearts and the kingdom of God will flow into you. The kingdom of God is here in our midst. So, Jesus goes on to say, repent and believe in the good news. Repent and believe in the good news. That's the call of Lent to each and every one of us as well. Repent. Turn. Turn away from your idols and your distractions and return to God. Repent means to turn around in the direction that you're going and face in the direction of God. 
Focus your attention on God and do those things which bring you closer to God. That is what Jesus was doing in his time in the wilderness. Jesus wanted to get away from the distractions of everyday things and relating to other people so he could completely focus on God and what God wanted him to do. Out in the wilderness, which for where Jesus lived was the desert, out in the desert, Jesus concentrated on God and what God wanted him to do. Now, out in the desert, however, Jesus did find some distractions in the form of wild beasts who might do him harm, and there was the devil. The devil came to Jesus to distract him from concentrating on God and to think only of himself. Matthew and Luke's gospel record that Satan tried to tempt Jesus away from serving God by serving himself, by telling the, the hungry Jesus to turn stones into bread so he could eat. Satan then told Jesus to make a show of his powers and God's favor by jumping off the temple. And Satan tempted Jesus by offering him to rule the kingdoms of the world. Each time, Jesus refused the temptations by quoting scripture, saying that our focus needs to be on God and what God wants. When practicing any discipline, we are tempted to take it easy and to give up the hard work of focusing our attention and denying ourselves. If there was not temptation to quit, well, we wouldn't call it discipleship or discipline. Struggle is a part of our faith. We are constantly being tempted to stop thinking about God and to do things other than what God wants us to do. We face a myriad of distractions every day to take our focus off of God and, our, and God's kingdom. So the season of Lent is meant for us to be intentional in focusing on or perhaps refocusing on God and God's kingdom. Now think about what you may take up this Lenten season to strengthen your faith and devotion to God. What do you need to do to prepare yourself for the resurrection of Christ in your life and the work that he asks us to do? Do you need to spend more time reading scripture? Or just be more focused when you do read? Do you need to pray more? Or do you just need to be intentional when you pray? Do you need to meditate? There are a number of ways to meditate. Judy not can tell you all the number of ways you can meditate. You can try one of them or try them all. Last year during our revision program, many people tried labyrinth walking and found it spiritually uplifting and thought-provoking. Maybe you should try it. Or, or try it again. Or maybe you need to do more than one practice. Maybe you need to try them all and see which one works best for you. In any case, you should try them. These spiritual practices and others are the doorway to a stronger and deeper appreciation and love of God. They are pathways to restoring faith and renewing one's devotion to God. Now, some people believe that spirituality in our day and age has to be different from what it has been practiced in the past. But the truth is that these practices have been time-tested and proved to be a benefit. You do not need to sit under a pyramid-shaped object or hold a magic crystal or do yoga or use new age language like speaking to the universe. If these things help you, okay, go ahead. But the reading of scripture, praying, meditating, labyrinth walking, have all been used with success for thousands of years to get people closer to God and to be in tune with God's ways. As I've told you before, to have spiritual practices help you, it is more about how focused your attention is when you are doing them than just doing them and going through the motions. It is very much like your being here today. It's been said, and it's true, that you get out of worship, out of a worship service, what you put into it. A worship service can inspire you and give you greater depths of understanding and devotion, but only if your heart and mind are open to receive it. If you do not open your heart, or maybe there's a better way to say it, if you do not put your heart into it, then you will be closed off to what is being offered. 
If your heart is not open, you will, oh, then you will not receive the inspiration or insight. The same is true of any of the spiritual practices. If your heart is not open to receive more than the words on the page, then your reading of Scripture will be ineffective in growing spiritually. If your heart is not open to receive a message, whether in word or intuition um, or gut feeling, then your praying will be just talking a monologue and not truly communicating with God. If your heart is not open when you meditate, well then, you will not know the, the touch of God's peace. If your heart is not open to receiving God's Spirit and walking a labyrinth, well, then you're just going through the paces and you're having yourself a stroll. Scripture reading, praying, meditating, and labyrinth walking are good practices that can lead to greater devotion and understanding of God, but only if we open our hearts to God and what God has to say to us. Over and over again, God declared in the Old Testament that God wanted our hearts and not our burnt offerings of animal sacrifices. In the New Testament, Jesus told us that God wanted our hearts when he preached that God wanted our love and God wanted us to love each other because loving one another is merely an extension of loving God. So in their essence, spiritual practices are meant to, to focus our attention so that we will open our hearts. Opening our hearts to God is the essence of what Lent is all about. But of course, opening our hearts to God is the essence of faith. Opening our hearts to God is the first step in loving God, serving God, and building the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, repent and return to God. But he could also say to us, open your hearts to God and let God's kingdom flow into your hearts and fill your lives. God and God's kingdom are near. Open your hearts and receive them. And may God bless you. Amen.